Welcome everyone, and we are excited to be embarking on the learning of a new Sefer, the base Halevi on Avas Yisrael, the love that we're supposed to have for our fellow Jews. But as is our custom, before we enter into the words in the Svarim and the Sefer itself, we first would like to go through a brief biography of the author, the Beis Halevi, of Yasef Dov Salavechik of Brisk, because once that we understand his godless, his greatness, we understand his Messiah, his nefesh, his sacrifice for Torah, the way that he learned, the way that he looked at the Torah, the way that he did for Klal Yisrael, it gives us a much greater appreciation of the words that we are going to learn inside of this marvelous and miraculous and elevating Sefer called Avas Yisrael. So a brief biography of this great giant of Torah, perhaps one of the greatest minds of the last 200 years in the Torah world. Rav Yosef Dov Salavechik, who is known as the patriarch of the Brisker dynasty, which lasts until this very day, you will find the Salavechik family and the Brisk dynasty still in parts of America, but concentrated primarily in Eretz Yisrael today. There are still yeshivas that have the name Brisk, and the Rosh yeshivas, the heads of that yeshiva, are Salavechik. He was born in Lithuania in the year of 1820. His mother, Rivka Salavechik, was the granddaughter of Rav Chaim Velozhener. Now that means that Rav Chaim Velozhener was the main disciple of the Vilna Goyim. He was the father of the yeshiva movement because he began the Velozhen yeshiva, which is really the prototype for all yeshivas throughout the world. So that means that Rav Yosef Dov Salavechik, the brisker, the Beis Halevi, was the great-grandson of Rav Chaim Velozhener. So the yichos, the lineage that he has within him, is something tremendous already, but as we know, your yichos really amounts to nothing unless you do something with it. And he certainly did something with what he was given. He was an ilui, he was a genius from a young age already. He had an incredible mind and intellect. And he was, he was going deep and deeper into the world of Talmud, into the world of Torah, into the world of Halacha with every year that was passing. In 1854, he was appointed to be the co-rosh yeshiva of the Velazhen yeshiva, the one of his great-grandfather, and he led it together with the Nitziv, Rav Naftali Tzvi Yehuda, Berlin, and they were the Rosh Yeshivas for the next 10 years together. Eventually, their ideas of how the Yeshiva should be run were a little bit different from each other, and these two great men decided that for the sake of the production that would take place in the Yeshiva, for the greatness of the Yeshiva to prosper and to grow, the Beis HaLevi would move on and the Nitziv would stay there as the Rosh Hashiva. Now this led him in 1865 to become the Rav of a city called Slotsk. And while he was there as the Rav, he was not only just paskining Shailas and Halacha, not only learning and giving Shiurim, but he was a very sensitive and caring spiritual leader. And he took care of the poor and he took care of the needy. And many of his Tamid and many of his students went on to become some of the greatest Ga'inim, the giants of, the, of that generation. Amongst them, the Rogachav or Ga'in, who was an enormous, enormous Rav of that time as well. Now this being said, the Beis Halevi eventually moved on from Slotsk, and he ended up in 1874 taking a different position. Well, really in 1877 he took the position of the Rav Abrisk, because the Rav at that time, Rav Yushua Leib Diskin, had moved to Eretz Yisrael, and Rav Yosef Dov held that position until 1892 when he passed away. And then his son, Rav Chaim, the famed Rav Chaim Salavechik, took over his role as the Rav of Brisk. Now this is the basic nutshell of the life and the times of the Beis Halevi, Rav Yosef Dov Salavechik, but I want to share the story of how we get to this Sefer Avas Yisrael. The Beis Halevi had several sons. One of them was of Chaim. Another one was of Simcha. And of Simcha was a giant as well in his learning. At the age of 20 years old, he was already holding in Talmud Bavli and Yushami. He was, he was a giant of, of wisdom. 
when the the Russians were making things more and more difficult for the Jewish people to live there, at a certain point, somewhere in the mid nineteen in the the mid nineteen teens, Rav Simcha decided that it was time for the Salavechik family to pick up and leave Russia and go to safer soil. So they began their trek across the Russian land and they were heading off to a boat that was supposed to take them eventually to America. And one thing that he had in his trust were the manuscripts of his father, manuscripts on Bitochen, which is one of the Sfarim that we learned previously, and manuscripts on Abbas Yisrael, which we're going to learn right now. And they were never published in the lifetime of the Beis HaLevi. And so they were entrusted into the hands of his son, Reb Simcha, and he wanted nothing more than to take them with him, travel to America, and eventually publish them. But listen to the story that took place. He had them all in a valise, and as they were traveling, so they, they got stuck at a certain border, and one of the border guards asked this young man, he saw his name, and he said, by chance, are you related to Rav Chaim Salavechik? So Rav Simcha answered, yes. As a matter of fact, Rav Chaim is my brother. How is it possible that the Russian officer knew about Rav Chaim? So Rav Chaim was also a sensitive soul, and he took care of all of the, the, those thoroughfare, the people that were visiting and staying and passing through, and the homeless children and the like. And this officer had been one of those homeless children who was being raised in the house of Chaim Salavechik. And out of great respect and gratitude to Reb Chaim, because he was hosted in his youth, the Russian officer allowed Reb Simcha and his family to leave the country. And as they were leaving, and they got to the docks where the boats were, so Reb Simcha looked around for the valise that had all of the manuscripts in them. And he realized he didn't have it. And he looked to his young son, who at the time was only 15 years old. And his son, he said to his son, do you, Rabbi Yosef Dov, he said, do you know, do you know, I'm sorry, Simch, yes, Rabbi Simcha had a son, Rabbi Yosef Dov, who was named after his father. And he said, do you know where the valise is? And he's looking around, no, we have no idea. And he said, maybe we left it on the horse and buggy that had taken us here. And so he ran to the, he, he told his son, I'm not leaving unless I have my father's manuscripts together with me. So the son ran back to the police station and he began asking around if there was a valise that was returned. And they said, you can go check in lost and found, but young boy, we have 2,000 horse and buggies that are driving through the city every day. How you will find it, we have no idea. So Rabbi Yosef Dov asked the police, do the drivers have licenses? And do the police have pictures of them? And the police said, yes. As a matter of fact, we have pictures of each one on file. Now Yosef Dov was a genius boy himself. And he said, can I please look through the pictures? And he went through 2,000 pictures and he pointed and he said, that's the one. He got the address. He went to the house of the wagon driver and lo and behold, he had just returned from a long day of traveling and driving and transporting, and the valise with the manuscripts was inside the buggy. He ran back to his father at the docks, they got onto the ship, and they set sail, and they ended up eventually in America. These manuscripts were never published for one reason or another until finally in 1985. The manuscripts of Bitochen and that of Avas Yisrael, and also one on humility, perhaps one other time we will learn that, were all published during that time. And then it was brought to the English-speaking audience, most recently by Rabbi David Satan, who has done a remarkable job translating and making this something for us to read. So HaKadosh Baruch Hu, in a long, circuitous way, he was able to bring this to the light of day, and we are the ones that will be the beneficiaries of learning the beautiful words of the Beis HaLevi and Avis Yisrael, the classical essay of Agoyin, Rav Yosef Dov Salavechik Abrisk, where he will in, teach us and infuse us and elevate us into just what it means to love your fellow Jew the way in which you love yourself. 
So that's the introduction, and Be'ez Hashem, tomorrow we will begin the actual Sefer itself. Have a wonderful day.